Hi, I'm Trish, and I'm sewing a quilt today uh, on my 1876 Wilcox and Gibbs sewing machine. It's a little different from other sewing machines. I'd like to tell you a little bit about it. First of all, the, mis the inventor was a Shenandoah farmer. They also had a carding mill on their property, which was very necessary in those days. It carded cotton for a weaving process. But he also knew a little bit about carpentry and a little bit about a whole bunch of other things. But when he saw in a, in a periodical, a newspaper, if you will, a picture of a machine, a sewing machine. He thought that was the most fascinating thing he had ever seen. So in his spare time, with his pen knife and some carpentry tools and other things, he decided to make his own sewing machine, but he was gonna make it out of wood. This was his prototype. So he carved and he figured and he looked and he copied the picture and it got, it was, everything went fine until the very end when he realized he didn't have a picture of the bottom so he couldn't figure out how to make the thing work. Well, he tried different things. He was very smart and he finally came up with the idea of what if he had some sort of a hook system underneath it and it would interlock the two threads. The one thread came down and it would grab it and pull it through and pull the next thread through. So it would interlock and form a chain stitch. Other machines did chain stitch but not fine enough for clothing. So he worked on this and he worked on this and to make his first prototype he actually had someone invest with him and he made the very first prototype and he thought, well, I'm going to see if anything like this already exists. So he took his prototype and he went off to Washington City. And in Washington City, he saw one, a sewing machine, a Grossman and Brown, through a store window and he went in and looked at it and realized his was totally different. Theirs had a bobbin. There was no bobbin in this machine because it has his unique hook. Well, he ran off to the patent office and patented that hooking system and also the feed dogs, the things that move the fabric forward was totally different. He, um, he decided that he would get investors and see if he could make this machine. And lo and behold, Mr. Wilson and Wilson, Wilcox and Wilcox, father and son, investors in newfangled ideas, decided that they would take him up on it and they would invest in his invention. The first one that they made was a winner. They thought it was totally different. People would want it because, first of all, it was smaller than most of the gargantuan machines of the day. It cost less. Most machines were $100 and in an era where a family made $4 a week, that was a lot of money. This machine could be made for $50, which is still a lot, I grant you, but it was more affordable for the average family. So, they decided to make the first few. And they went and found a factory in Providence, Rhode Island, and they chose that one because they made clocks. They were precision manufacturing, and they wanted that precision for their machine, which is probably why 
they were made this these machines were made until the, after the second world war that i'd like to show you the most interesting part of the wilcox and gibbs do you see this little metal looper in there that's what makes this machine different and why it has no bobbin that picked up one thread twisted it and the next hook the looper comes through and looped it through the thread to complete the stitch. It can go as fast as you would like it to go. It never misses a stitch. When they did the first hundred machines, they were gone before anybody could ever know it. And next order was for a thousand machines. And by the time that, that World War I rolled around, they were making 10,000 machines a week in that factory. Well, the factory got too small, they outgrew it, and they decided they needed to build their own separate specialized place, which they did. They also developed a home office and moved it to Broadway in New York City. We're in the big time now. Was this quilt top that we're seeing now um, pieced together on the Wilcox and Gibbs? Absolutely, it was. That is a, That pattern is called a soldier's nine patch. And as you can see, every bit of it looks totally different on one side than it does on another. But this is a beautiful fine. It almost looks like a double stitch. It's very durable and it was flexible, which no other chain stitch was. There were other chain stitch machines, but they were more rustic. And this is very fine. But other machines that were chain stitch machines were not flexible. So this is so much stronger.